Hello friends, today I'd like to describe the corneal pocket fixation technique for getting a firm fixation of the eyeball. And let me describe the technique first. First you have to create a small blind pocket into the clear cornea without entering the anterior chamber. This is a partial thickness pocket. Now using a rod like device passed through the pocket in a tangential fashion you can get good fixation of the eyeball. Two such incisions are made at 5 and 7 o'clock position. The 7 o'clock pocket is used in order to create fixation to make the side port incision. Once this is done then we can use the 5 o'clock pocket with a rod passed through it. The hold is tangential. This gives you a firm yet gentle hold of the cornea and this can be used in order to create the clear corneal incision, I make a small opening in the anterior capsule in order to facilitate the tear with the capsular excess forceps. Any of them have gone blunt. The advantage of the corneal pocket incision is that while you take a fixation onto the cornea, it can be done when the patient is being operated under topical anesthesia. The hold is tangential and uh, you don't have to hold the eye with a uh, tooth forceps which may elicit pain or a tauntin fixation ring which may also elicit pain. The biggest advantage of the corneal pocket is in patients who tend to squeeze like this young lady with a posterior subcapsular cataract was being operated under topical anesthesia who tending to squeeze the eye and you can see there's a prominent Bell's phenomenon. So I create the small corneal pocket with the help of a 26 gauge needle and about half the bevel length is all that is needed. Using the rod, you can get a firm tangential hold and you can move and steer the eyeball into the straight ahead position. Like I told you, the 7 o'clock position pocket is used to create the side port incision or assist in the creation of a side port incision and the 5 o'clock pocket is used to assist in the creation of the main incision. Now once you hold this, the patient does not feel any pain unlike any other method of trying to yank the eye into the visual axis. So you can see how easy it is and you can see the patient's attempt to try to close the eye. There is a rotatory movement of the eyeball. Clear corneal incision is being made. If you try to fixate the eye with passing an instrument to the side port, then you can have visco leaking out and hypotony. Now, by taking the corneal pocket incision, there is no hypotony that occurs during the entire procedure. Now, let us observe how I continue with the rest of the procedure. So, as I perform the capsulorexis, the patient is trying to squeeze. This is evident from the radial folds that appear on the cornea as the eye becomes more hypotonous. However, the pocket incision helps you to maintain the eyeball in the straight ahead position even in patients who have a very prominent Bell's phenomenon. This pocket incision is done with a 26 gauge needle. You can also use an MVR blade to create this pocket and you can get the hold by using either a rod or you can use a thin iris repositor in order to take fixation. scores over tooth forceps and also the cotton, tip, cotton bud in order to get fixation of the eye, especially in patients who tend to squeeze a lot. And definitely, unlike the tauntin fixation ring, this is gentler on the cornea. It can be done in all cases in which topical phacoemulsification is being done because you are not touching the conjunctiva or you are not holding on to the epistelial tissue at any point. Now you see that this patient was uh, trying to squeeze but with the help of this corneal pocket incision like a magic wand, I am able to hold the eye in the straight ahead coaxial position throughout performing the initial procedures which is the rexis and the hydro dissection, hydro delineation. The minute I let go of the eye, you can see that it springs back as the prominent Bell's phenomenon kicks in. Once you are able to get both the side port instrument as well as the FACO probe inside the eye, then these two instruments are enough to keep the eyeball in the straight ahead position and the pocket incision is not needed. Now there are several advantages or uses for the pocket incision. I initially created it for LRI purposes but now I have given up performing limb relaxing incisions. Now this is a patient in whom intravitreal aflebacept is being being injected, we measure 4 millimeters from the limbus as the 
eye is phakic, you mark that area and use the corneal pocket incision to get a good fixation of the eye. This of course is being done under topical anesthesia and using a 30 gauge needle, I'm injecting the intravitreal into the eye. So if you use a tooth forceps, you can sometimes cause conjunctival tear and shearing with petechial hemorrhages, which can also be a little non-aesthetic. Whereas the pocket incision through the clear cornea does not induce any astigmatism. In case you inadvertently enter the eye, it still does not matter because this is still a tunnel incision. Use of a corneal pocket incision in the implantation of ICA in a young 23 year old high myope who also tended to have a prominent Bell's phenomenon. Superior limbus kept disappearing underneath the speculum. So I first create the pocket incision at 10 o'clock as well as at 7 o'clock position and these two pocket incisions will enable me to get a good control of the eyeball for the implantation of the ICL. So using this pocket incision, I'm able to create the side port through which a small amount of viscoelastic is injected into the eye. After which I use the other corneal pocket in order to create the temporal clear corneal incision for the implantation of the ICL. The corneal pocket gives you a very gentle yet tangential hold on the eye. This hold is good and firm and it, it enables you to maneuver the eye into a coaxial position quite easily. It does not produce conjunctival tear or particular hemorrhages and can be very well done in patients who are being operated under topical anesthesia. I'm using the corneal pocket incision as a traction to inject gently the ICL. I'm doing it slowly, making sure that the perforation appears towards the right so that the ICL is in the correct position, orientation is correct. Please try the corneal pocket incision. I'm sure it will work well and help you in tough cases. Thank you for your attention.